Ever since Naruto and Sasuke vs. Jigen fight was first featured in the Boruto manga and later in the anime, I always felt that it was underwhelming. The fight is portrayed in the anime and manga works if you know absolutely nothing about Naruto and Sasuke's abilities, but as a long-time Naruto fan, I was understandably upset. I have no problems with Naruto and Sasuke losing, but the portrayal of it all and their intelligence leaves much to be desired. Make it believable and in a way that honors their characters, especially since said characters will lose their abilities later on. A staple of every good writing is show and don't tell, but Boruto often does the opposite. If you have two characters that have a wide variety of different abilities, they will use it if faced with mortal threat. Yes, maybe those abilities will not work, but if Naruto in canon can use all possible size or Sengans, knowing that the Jutsu can be absorbed, then maybe, just maybe using Boil Release or Truth Seeking Orbs isn't out of the question. So, join me as we follow a different writer's take on how the fight could have gone, if both Naruto and Sasuke unleashed all of their potential. Perspective is a peculiar thing. Since the time of his creation, he believed that power trumps overall. Survival of the fittest that they embraced was more than an ideology, it was a way of life for each member of his clan. Having resolved to climb to the summit of existence, unconcerned by countless sacrifices one must undertake in their noble quest. He believed in the grand will of his people a credence that served him well for eons, even while he encountered troubles from inferior creatures. Of course, his perspective took a gradual turn. Not to the point that he'd abandon his goal, but only for him to acknowledge that there is more to these creatures than meets the eye. His fellow clansmen would mock him for it, an act that he too would indulge in their place, if not for his not too recent setback. For over millennia, he has been marooned on this pitiful mud bowl. Betrayed, and crippled by his own subordinate who went against everything their race stands for. However, he has spent his time well. Once he became fully in control of this vessel, no matter how inadequate, he managed to establish a clandestine network that spans the entire planet. He has invested so much, and planned for so long for it to end here. And no matter how powerful he is, arrogance is something that is better left behind, especially when dealing with two people who made Chakra their own, and surpassed some of his clansmen. He is still certain that he has what it takes to beat them even in inadequate vessels, however, he shouldn't get too ahead of himself. Shinobi were a tricky bunch. An uncomfortable all weighed heavily upon the desolated dimension. Not even a sound was heard in what once was an inhabited planet full of all kinds of alien life forms and advanced technology. It was a worthy harvest that he enjoyed consuming all those millennia ago. In all of the eons of his living, he can count the number of good fruits he ate on the fingers of his hand. The planet of Transil was amongst them. However, that was long ago, and he doesn't see a reason to bother himself with the distant past. The glory of the future is the only thing that matters, to accomplish his purpose for existing and become a peerless being. For that goal, an unmatched chakra fruit is necessary to accelerate the process. That began over 2000 years ago on a backwater planet called Earth. The Atsusuki are in search of omnipotence that will emerge from their collective evolutions. Many civilizations have and shall fall, but it is for a worthy cause. Their existence will serve a greater purpose. For that, they should be honored, for they have been chosen as a catalyst for his godhood. Even if the all criteria on why Earth is the best harvest would insult their natural inhabitants. God Tree has two criteria that must be met to bear satisfactory fruit. An Atsusuki needs to be fed to the ten tails that act as seedlings, and then the blooming tree absorbs nature's energy and blood that is soaked into the ground of the planet. To put it in simpler terms, the more the planet's population fights, battles, and kills, the better the chakra fruit will be. That's why Earth is the golden standard amongst all other planets. It's in a class of its own. Humanity is one of the most grievously disgusting creatures in the known universe, perhaps even beyond. He has never seen any beings act so unnecessarily cruel. They kill their own kind to win pointless battles, they torture, and kill for minuscule accomplishments that last less than a century. Less than a week in a disturbingly large amount of instances. It would be tragic if it wasn't too inane. But regardless of his own opinion on humanity, the fact that humans act in such a manner, would provide him with the most potent fruit. And another step closer to divinity. At that thought, in his mind's eye, a figure of a fourth dimensional being emerged, his appearance how it was before his ascension. He vows on his very existence that he accomplished that same state. He will turn that into reality. Before that, he has business to conclude with Earth's protectors. Ichiha Sasuke. You trace Hokage's chakra here, didn't you? Jaija noted, the tone of his voice dispassionate. What an unfortunate timing. 
If you had arrived a few minutes later, you could have taken him home without having to fight a feudal battle. It depends on how you think about it. The sword of Kusanagi was drawn, to chromatic eyes blazing as both eternal Manjakyo Shuringen and Rinnegan stared down at him. If we crush you here, it will have been worth getting here early, no? Yeah, that's right. This is perfect. We can go all out here without worrying about anything. The Hokage agreed, getting into his stance for the fight. The pointless effort amused him, and he couldn't help but let out a chuckle. You're cracking me up. The two strongest shinobi stood close to each other, their eyes never leaving his general direction. Hokage tapped the Ichiha on the shoulder, crimson chakra enveloping him before it was quickly absorbed through the usage of the Kido. Not that it would do him any good. Another beat of silence passed, soon overwhelmed by the entire structure shaking as the duo rushed towards him in a shower of gold and lightning. Unperturbed, an onyx staff readjusted in his hands, intercepting the bright fist with ease. His left palm pivoted the upper part of the staff towards Hokage's face, a resounding smack echoing as it connected with its intended target. Leaving no room for respite, a front kick found itself planted into Uzumaki's midsection, sending him flying to the other side of the ceiling coffin. Kusanagi coated in lightning found itself in his peripheral, his long-range weapon blocking it as sparks went flying from the collision. Jaijin gazed at the samsara eye with disregard, which Ichiha took full advantage of. Jinjutsu Rinnegan. Sasuke has most powerful illusion technique, capable of ensnaring nine biju with a single glance, is a feat that impressed Sage of Six Paths himself. It's quite a shame, such jutsu is useless against beings who conquer civilizations via planetary jinjutsu. Shock painted Sasuke's visage at the failure, but he quickly compassed himself, backflipping to gain some distance, a lightning cloak around him. Jaijin never let up. He moved quickly to close the distance, the staff brought in a downward arc, which Sasuke defended with his sword. A clash ensued, Sasuke attacking exposed spots in his stance, while Jaijin defended with relative ease from long range. He went for the legs, which Ichi had jumped over and reciprocated by trying to behead him. Jaijin brought his staff in a horizontal position, each attempt yielding no result for the Rinnegan user. When the sword and staff connected once more, Sasuke used his physical force and minor application of Tendo to force the staff out of his hand, but at that very moment, Jaijin used his exerted strength against him. Before he could comprehend what just occurred, the staff vanished seemingly into thin air, a sudden disappearance of leverage, leaving him out of balance for a few precious moments. Enough for Jaijin to plant a right cross that made contact with the Chiha's cheek, sending his sword out of his hand and into the air, while his body spun backward. When Sasuke tried to regain his balance, he caught sight of Jaijin moving his fingers. In an instant, two rods pierced his left lung and kidney, the shock of it all forcing the Chiha to his knees with a grunt of pain. Kara's leader tried to finish him off, but Naruto appeared from above with Sasuke's sword in his hands. He immediately engaged an unarmed alien, with Jaijin bobbing and weaving from every slash. Once Naruto went for an overhead slash, Jaijin clasped his hands between the sword, stopping it in his tracks and with a backflip kick, sending it into the air once more. His leg extended, pushing the hookage some distance from him. With index and middle finger raised, Dakakutin was activated as two rods pierced the Hokage's head, one through the right eye and the other through his forehead, the exit hole being the back of the head. No doubt, his brain suffered a gruesome injury. He sent out another one toward the Hokage, hoping to finish him off. Naruto. Sasuke exclaimed, ripping the rods from his body. His left arm transformed into a mechanical extension, from which he fired a dozen rockets toward Naruto's back. Blood spilled as he managed to get the rods out of his head, Kurama's healing capabilities helped him in that regard. The moment rockets were inches from his back, Sasuke reacted. Amenitejikar. In an instant, Naruto and Jaijin's positions were reversed, with the latter being into the range of ballistic weaponry. That damned Rinnegan. He cursed, vowing to get rid of it as soon as possible. A staff that was meant for Hokage was easily caught, he redirected every one of the rockets, sending them to different corners of the battlefield. Sasuke didn't stop there. Using Amenitejikara once more, rockets found themselves next to Jaijin's position, but no explosion occurred. They were all quickly neutralized, vanishing from this dimension, courtesy of Sukina Hikona. A few beats of silence passed, every occupant of a dead planet being at a momentary impasse. How? Naruto trailed off, not being capable of understanding what just happened. Sasuke too shared that confusion as his soaring sword returned to him by using the attractive force of the Rinnegan. Before they could muse over it some more, Jaijin's hand moved, which caused several rods to appear in their direction. Using his six path sensing to his fullest, Naruto managed to avoid a few, while three stray ones caught him in his right arm and his head specifically his brain. He pulled them out immediately, his mind trying to formulate a solution. How is he doing this? 
can heal things into existence. Naruto wondered, his mind running with some possibilities. His sensing caught something, but couldn't quite figure out what it was. Another even more concerning fact about Jaijin is that he can't sense him. At all. He simply doesn't register on his sensory radar, which is ridiculous since the man has chakra, an incredibly potent one at that, and he can use jutsu. However, it's like he doesn't even exist before him. He has no doubt Sasuke also figured it out. Is he suppressing his chakra? That isn't it. Kurama. Naruto addressed his partner, waiting for him to continue. Simple chakra suppression can't hide from your sensing abilities, Naruto sensed invisible shadows that existed in other dimensions, so if that technique was used, it shouldn't be a problem. Strongest of nine, did you recall a certain event from the fourth great ninja war? Do you remember that time when Kagaya got a jump on you and Sasuke? Naruto recalled that moment that happened almost immediately when Kagaya revived. Both Sasuke and he were on guard and without any warning, Kagaya appeared behind them through space-time ninjutsu, crying since they reminded her of Hagoromo and Humar. More importantly, Naruto never sensed her. At all. It was like she never existed. Don't tell me, I suspect that they can erase their chakra. Kurama finished his partner's thought, with an ease that betrayed the situation. Boy, shouldn't you be more concerned about this? Naruto exclaimed, growing unsettled at the new information. You idiot what's another sensory ability that I granted you? Kurama left the words hanging, hoping that he would catch on. His eyes widened as he recalled that time he first unlocked Kurama's chakra mode, it's a passive one, so it is constantly activated. It's just that Naruto never truly focused on its abilities after he gained six paths power. During the time Biju and his Jinchuriki were conversing, Sasuke tried to solve the enigma before him, his eyes straining with effort. Even with the kinetic vision of Eternal Menjakyo, he couldn't quite decipher his ability fully. Instead, once he saw his hands move, did he apply an appropriate response? Shinra Tensei. Just as he thought, the repulsive force sent those dense rods from his general vicinity, leaving him safe from harm. Or so he thought instantly those rods expanded, growing in size, and traveled towards Sasuke until they reached him, impaling him through his heart, right arm, and left leg. He let out a cry of pain and coughed blood, shocked at what occurred. His chakra was steadily getting drained from him. Dual-colored eyes widened as two of those rods were specifically aimed at his eyes to destroy them, but a safeguard activated at that point. A thin, small layer of paper that is located behind his left earlobe activated, spreading into a horizontal line that covered his eyes, the upper part of his head. The rods lost all momentum once they clashed against the ceiling paper reinforced with his chakra, and fell to the ground with a clank. Barrier ninjutsu, aimed to protect specific parts of the user's body, Jaijin said, annoyed at the interruption, but showing nothing of the sort. I suspect it only works against attacks meant it is the jutsu and the upper part of his head. Jaijin took note of how it couldn't defend against a punch on a chihestion. Sasuke. Naruto cried out, becoming a golden blur as he engaged Jaijin once more. Meanwhile, Sasuke used the king of hell to heal his injuries, with a giant demonic mouth swallowing him. The former monk's body moved, performing a sidekick that crashed into the hokage. With a grunt, he was pushed back, the shockwave of the kick damaging the space outside the ceiling pot. So heavy these were the strongest hits Naruto ever experienced. He saw Jaijin move his hand and just a millisecond before, he activated his jutsu. Earth style. Mudwall. A huge construct reinforced with his chakra appeared before him and intercepted those rods, every one of them embedded through one side and exiting through the other. Naruto took cover behind it, but soon figured out those rods began moving through the earth wall, and began expanding towards him. Just like against Sasuke. Naruto broke them apart before they had a chance to impale him, and began making other preparations for their enemy. Jaijin's eyes were dull as a huge cloud of smoke erupted before him, 5,000 shadow clones emerging in every nook and cranny of the battlefield. Without a single word, they all moved in a coordinated fashion toward their enemy. Jaijin spun his staff, hitting one clone until it popped, only for a dozen to attempt to crash into him, which Jaijin predicted. He moved his body to the side with a twirl, staff connecting with clones from long range. One disappeared from the hit on the liver, while the other popped when the weapon hit him in the face. This continued for a few seconds, Jaijin attacking with his staff left and right and destroying each clone. He even intercepted one clone that attempted a sneak attack from the ground, the copy disappearing in a puff of smoke like all the others. Jaijin decided on another course of action as his right arm was poised, and his karma markings gleamed crimson. A huge wave of red energy erupted from his palm, destroying the clones and every member of their kin, quickly dropping their numbers by half. Jaijin redirected the blow toward the Earth-style wall, knowing that the original was there. 
Indeed, Naruto jumped out of his cover as the structure was obliterated into nothing, a constant stream of crimson energy following him. A single black orb came into existence, forming a sphere that surrounded the Hokage. The moment, the Karma Blast made contact with the truth-seeking orb, an enormous blast occurred, leaving devastation throughout the dimension and celestial body surrounding them. Naruto's cross-shaped pupils dilated as he watched the sphere made out of truth, seeking orb cracking under the pressure of the attack. The concentrated beam of energy broke the structure apart, the attack covering him completely. Another explosion rocked the foundations of the seal as Jaijin watched out, noticing that his clones were still intact. Two of the clones glided towards Jaijin, their legs raised to start Yuzumaki Renden. The vessel of the Atsutsuki made a split in midair, popping the two of them with a cinch. One managed to wrestle his staff out of his hands, but Jaijin was unnerved by the fact. He tilted his head to the side twice and avoided each hit from the clone. The former monk's body moved in a blur as he crashed his fist into the clone, popping it immediately. Jaijin retrieved his staff as another bunch of thousands moved swiftly, their chakra brought to a boiling point. Boil release. Unrivaled strength. Jaijin's eyes widened by a fraction as the speed and strength of his opponents increased immensely. He managed to kick one away, but it didn't phase him much, let alone make him pop. To the side, Sasuke, who was now fully healed, watched all of this with desperate intensity, his eternal Manjakyo Sharingan scanning the entire fight. A fist came at Jaijin's face, but he was just in time to bring his staff to defend. The onyx weapon cracked under pressure, the vessel of the alien making hand gestures that made numerous rods appear all around him, trying to impale the clones. At that moment, however, did he seemingly vanish. This is Sasuke Sharingan blazed as he finally saw the workings of his ability. Located on the other side of the battlefield, the original Naruto who was covered in Kurama Avatar's head came to the same conclusion, six paths and jutsu helping him in that regard. In an instant, he regrouped with Sasuke, watching on as the one-sided fight concluded. Clones began disappearing left and right, rods stabbing into their forms. Jaijin emerged high in the air, hand outreached, as giant black cubes with red lines dropped to the battlefield, destroying everyone in the vicinity. The remaining clones engaged in aerial combat as well, but Jaijin managed to fend them off, courtesy of Dakakutin. The colossal cloud of smoke erupted in the aftermath, and from it Jaijin emerged, looking none the worse for wear. Several beats of silence passed, which was broken by Naruto's blunt statement. So you're making yourself smaller. Naruto stated, lips pressed in a thin line. The ability is simple, but powerful. Sasuke took a glance at the direction in which he threw those rods, keeping vigilant about another attack. He stared at Jaijin once more. Those rods start small enough that you don't even realize you're stabbed, but they inflict mortal wounds once he restores them to their full size. He also has some sort of gravity manipulation, possibly telekinesis, that helps him maneuver them freely. It also might seem like he suddenly disappears, but he's actually shrinking himself really small. The latter alone renders any possible sealing via Chibaku Tensei useless, unless they find a way to incapacitate before that. Sasuke knows it will be just a waste of chakra, since their opponent can shrink. When taking into account how he is much more powerful than Mama Shiki after he consumed Kanshiki, he could simply break free with pure physical strength to boot. At that thought, the Chiha recalled how his karma could progress even further. An image of that new Atsutsuki and Jaijin's resemblance to it comes to mind. All that bothered Sasuke almost on a personal level. As a former disciple of Orochimaru, he saw the despicable things deranged Sanin had done. Countless human experiments, body possession the latter being what stroked some level of familiarity to him. When he first met Orochimaru, the Sanin was wearing another man's skin. He was just done with living corpse jutsu, forced to use another host since Sasuke couldn't arrive to him in time due to Naruto fighting him, something that he is eternally grateful to his friend. He still remembers the sensations of imitation that he sensed every time he conversed with Orochimaru. It was a shadow of what once was a human being. Now, he is reminded of that feeling once more. When he looks at Jaijin, it seems like their opponent wasn't truly before them. Adding the fact that Kawaki was constantly called a vessel, his misgivings only grow deeper. Simple, yet annoying ability. Naruto grunted out, snapping Sasuke from his musings. The Hokage decided to share his intel. And he doesn't create those rods like you do with your Rinnegan, he summons them. However, the sheer quickness of Jaijin's ability is on another level. It had them both stunned before they managed to figure it out by literally watching the fight from the sidelines. Naruto. The aforementioned shinobi turned to Sasuke, noting the concern lacing his voice. That's not his only secret. Commendable, both of you. Jaijin interrupted him, adjusting the staff in his hand. 
Your analytic abilities are remarkable when combined with Shuringen's insight and Six Path Sage mode. Sensing the number of beings who have figured out my ability can be counted on one hand. However, Rinnegan based space time ninjutsu is quite troublesome. Jaijin pointed his finger at Sasuke, emphasizing his stance. The one I need to eliminate first is you, Ichiha Sasuke. Uncurling the remaining fingers of his left hand was all the indication they needed to jump above, rods the same size as them impaling the ground on which they previously stood. His other secret, what is it? Naruto urged. Not now, he's coming. Sasuke's eternal manjakyo saw him shrinking. The Rinnegan gleamed as he caught a glance of him appearing to his full size behind them, his hand reaching out once more. Shinra Tensei. Gravity shifted, and a multitude of rods were blown away farther than the eye could reach. Sasuke made sure of that, learning from his last experience. Excellent counter. Jaijin praised. Naruto flew towards their enemy, fist primed for a strike. Daijin caught the limb casually, while at the same time blocking an attack with his staff from Sasuke, who appeared behind him, the Ichiha flying using his Tendo path of the Rinnegan. Jaijin pushed Naruto to the ground with a well-placed kick, even if Hokage managed to defend. Sasuke attacked with his Kusanagi aimed for the head, with Jaijin flying down with a spin to avoid it. He used the momentum to land a spinning elbow to the Ichiha's head, his hair swishing about as the attack connected and pushed him back to the ground. Naruto engaged once again, but a spin kick knocked him through the air. The Hokage coasted after the hit and attacked once again, with Sasuke doing the same. Streaks of gold and lightning clashed against Jaijin high in the sky, the Atsutsuki holding his bow in a defensive stance as he was slowly, but surely getting pushed back. In an instant, he shrank and used his smaller frame to strike the Hokage from the sky, to the lower part of the ceiling coffin. Returning to full size, he noticed from the corner of his eyes a blue figure. The staff came instantaneously to his hands, sparks clashing as he blocked the Kusanagi, while simultaneously counter-attacking. With a finger raise, two rods fixed themselves deeply in the Ichiha's shoulder, making him falter just enough for Jaijin to aim a right hook to his chin once again. This time, however, he was met with some resistance. He raised an eye at the purple chakra construct appearing and covering the Ichiha's body. Still, the force of the blow was enough to push him back, just enough for Jaijin to raise his fingers to use the Kakuten once more. Seeing the fingers moving, Sasuke shot numerous black receivers from his bodies that clashed against Jaijin's own, before sending them spinning through the air. Jaijin caught the hookage preparing to engage his finger moving in an all too familiar cross-shaped sign. Unbothered by it, he charged his chakra into karma, and formed a chakra blast that traveled towards the humanoid Susanu, but the moment it connected, it got absorbed by Gakido. Which is exactly what he had planned. During the time the Ichiha was absorbing the blast, a rod appeared through both hands of the Hokage, nailing them together and making him yelp in pain, as his famous jutsu was rendered useless. Another few were shot through his eyes and forehead. Jaijin flew downwards, focusing power behind his punch that eventually sent the Hokage into the ground, his damaged brain rattled from the force. Sasuke moved, his Susanoo's sword aimed at Jaijin's form. The alien shrank, avoiding the attack that caused damage to the environment outside the coffin. Naruto ripped the rods from his head by using chakra arms. I know where he is. Naruto couldn't sense him with conventional methods, as he can erase his chakra, but Kurama's negative emotion sensing is not chakra reliant. All negative emotions, hatred, lying, and intent to kill can be figured out clearly. Using Kurama's chakra arms, he formed a single hand sign, and another group of 5,000 clones appeared before him. Original Naruto used all his strength to rip apart the rods, his damaged hands healing in an instant. Clones sprung to action by increasing their physical parameters with boil release yet again. Their limbs and extra chakra arms were damaging the ceiling coffin and everything outside of it to catch their opponent off guard. Sasuke's Susanoo shot an arrow as a distraction, but it vanished as soon as it connected to Jaijin, his absorption taking care of that. The smaller opponent used his rods to impale the Susanoo and the clones, which Sasuke managed to avoid. A minor application of Dukakuten and Gra- Amenet Ejikari used to get away from those dense cubes, lest he would be crushed. To his great annoyance, he saw that Jaijin was still making them follow him. Using Bancho Tenen to force the control out of his hands yielded no results. In that case, the strongest of the Tendo abilities should, hopefully, do the trick. Shinra Tensei. Sasuke put everything into the jutsu that spanned the entire battlefield, those cubes finally getting blown away to every corner of the pot. Sasuke made sure to keep an eye on them in case Jaijin decided to utilize them once more. At Sasuke's move, Kurama noticed that something was wrong. His Jinchuriki sharing his sentiment. It was a sudden change. This is why Naruto and, by extension, his clones, are now confused. He once again can't sense Jaijin. 
Kurama's sensing abilities could keep track of him just a moment ago, but now they stopped working. Not trying to get too discouraged, Naruto and his clones continued attacking, albeit blindly. Meanwhile, using his opponent's loss of sense as a boon, Jaijin's smaller form and superior speed were more than enough to end them all. He began popping those clones with a mixture of Dakakitan and his physical strength, until their number once again began drastically dropping. One of Naruto's was lucky enough to accurately predict shrunken Jaijin's position. His eyes widened as the clone was replaced by the Ichiha, his body coursing with Chidori stream as a Susanoo arm, finally managed to hit their nimble opponent. The shock of it all caused Jaijin to return to his full size. Get him. Upon actually seeing him, the remaining thousand clones chorused together, engaging Jaijin as boil release constantly amped them. Sasuke, you need to tell me where he is when he shrinks again. Naruto relayed the information, causing Sasuke to look at him with bewilderment. For some reason, I lost the ability to sense him with six paths in Jutsu Kurama's power. What? It was the only thing Sasuke could utter as he and Naruto jumped over rods that were impaled on the ground. Original Naruto gritted his teeth, manifesting five more truth-seeking orbs and shaping them into Fuma Shuriken, and willing them towards the opponent that was on a Shadow Clone Massacre. Sasuke assisting him in that regard. Using Bansho Tenen, he made Jaijin lose his footing for a bit, as the truth-seeking shurikens whirled to his location. Just when he dropped the clones to their last ten, Jaijin charged a chakra blast that popped seven of them. Noticing the incoming projectiles, he caught the truth-seeking construct in his hands. He snapped it in two and threw one part to the offending clones, the construct slamming into their forms and causing two to pop. Using the other piece, he deflected the incoming soul erasure techniques, until they all cluttered to the ground. Even that is not enough. Naruto was genuinely shocked at how he managed to just touch truth-seeking orbs without getting erased out of existence. The jutsu can only be touched by those who have six paths power. Well, he shouldn't be all that taken aback as Jaijin is an Atsutsuki, and six paths in jutsu is derived from God Three and Ten Tails. Still Menetejikara Sasuke appeared next to Jaijin, Chidori stream coursing through his body, his Susanoo arm ready to pummel him. Only for his kinetic vision to notice a small cube between them. The Kakuten the disruption cube was immediately returned to its full size, separating the Dejutsu wielders as it crashed into the ground, kicking up a huge cloud of dust on the battlefield. Within Naruto's mindscape, Kurama finally figured out the problem behind their loss in sensory abilities. Naruto, those cubes are the issue. The moment Sasuke pushed them away, we couldn't sense him anymore. As long as we're surrounded by them, we won't know where he is. Naruto's eyes widened at the information, but stood back to wait for his chance. The last clone flew towards the cubes, something that Jaijin took notice of. No, you don't. A huge karma blast was shot from his right hand towards the running clone. A sneer painted his visage as he saw a Chiha appear via his teleportation as a shield for the clone, Kakito absorbing the blast as the transparent barrier surrounded his body. Sukuna Hakona was used before the clone could get to those cubes, said structures all disappearing in the Dakakutan dimension. Now. Original Naruto used that moment of distraction and flew, his golden form using boil release as well as having magnet release. Rasengan in his right hand. The base colored orb with ceiling markings was aimed at Jaijin's head to kill him. If not that, then at least to seal his movements. It eventually connected with his head, but to Naruto's shock, he still managed to absorb it. I suspect it's similar to Kakito's absorption barrier. Meaning that even if they get a sneak attack with a jutsu, it can still be absorbed. That's annoying. Naruto lamented, thinking of his fight with Ido Tensei Nagato. We need to create a better opening. Not dwelling much on his failure, Naruto channeled as much of boil release as possible, his left arm aimed at his face as he finally landed a hit on Jaijin. His face twisted from the force of a punch as he was sent from the sky, back to the hard ground, his form rolling through rods that decorated the battlefield. Sasuke took that moment to engage, sword coated in a Matarasu, aimed to decapitate. The staff came into his hands through Takakutin, Jaijin channeling his chakra through the weapon, as he blocked the Ichiha's attack. At the same that, he began absorbing a Matarasu from the Kusanagi. Sasuke countered by using Takedo to take his chakra, but upon seeing that karma chakra absorption is superior to his own, he opted for two other of his six paths abilities. A mechanical arm erupted from his left stump, as he channeled arguably the deadliest jutsu in this arsenal. Ninjendo ethereal glow came to his hand, as Sasuke began extracting his soul through the human path. It took two seconds for him to realize the futility of his action. The Ichiha wasn't surprised as he took note that soul extraction, just like his Jinjutsu, or Naruto's truth-seeking orbs, had absolutely no effect on his opponent. No matter how hard he tried, it simply didn't do anything. 
Sasuke suspected that Ninjendo would fail, but still opted to use it. After all, there is no harm in trying it. Shinra Tensei. The omnidirectional repulsive force was used. Daijin, only smiling at the futility of it all as he pushed through it with sheer strength alone. Naruto came at that moment, his arm glowing as he decided to finish him once and for all. Sasuke's mechanical arm formed a blade and aimed the weapon towards him as well. Jaijin shrank, retreating from their vicinity, which caused Sasuke to let out an annoyed sigh, his lips pressed in a thin line. He looked at Naruto with a knowing look, who only smirked at his friend. Now he knows exactly where he is. And more importantly, so does his free clone. The vessel's eyes bulged as the golden claws with black markings emerged from the ground, grabbing him in a vice grip and spinning him through the air, causing the structure to shake. This is... Jaija noticed the markings as magnet release jutsu, and he scoffed, his movements restrained once the jutsu made contact. It matters not, he can still absorb it after all. Not that Naruto and Sasuke plan to allow him to do so. This one moment is everything to them. They will use this opportunity. Kurama and Susanu avatars manifested with full force that would otherwise decimate the entire ground on which they stood. Their height was towering over the entire ceiling coffin, colors of bright gold and dark purple, symbolic of their owner's life paths. Gathering Tail Beast Bomb and Super Tail Beast Rass and Shurikens, he sends them out without any hesitation to Jaijin at incredible speeds. Sasuke, too, followed suit. Using his Shuringen and Rinnegan to the fullest, he formed nine Chibaku Tensei that surrounded Jaijin and trapped him within. Covering them all up with the Matarasu, Sasuke fired dozens of Susanu arrows infused with flames that were hotter than the sun. Damn it. While I absorb Jutsu, I can't move swiftly. He cursed inwardly at how they cornered him like that. Fortunately, he doesn't have to move to avoid those attacks. The two strongest shinobi saw the black and red space-time ninjutsu activating, swallowing their enemy before their attacks could kill him. An action that made them scoff at yet another failure. The attack sailed far away from the coffin into the other planet surrounding them. The result was catastrophic for the solar system. While they were located in a ceiling coffin that absorbed most of their attacks, the damage was continuously spreading out to the celestial bodies adjacent to the dead planet. Dual attacks vaporized a multitude of celestial bodies, leaving nothing in the wake. A second later, Jaijin emerged from the portal on the ground level, looking fine, despite everything that just transpired. So that was the two of you at their strongest Naruto could sense immense buildup in Chakra, as Kara's leader grew a horn, the outgrowth curling around his head until it resembled a crown. Sasuke, too, could see the Eldritch Chakra enveloping his body. It is natural, all Jutsu have their weakness. I'm grateful that you helped me discover mine. Jaijin was hunched over, his karma markings glowing in red color for a few short bursts, as his eyes zeroed in on the two avatars. Mark my words you will never be as lucky, as you were just now. A few beats of silence passed over the battleground, each occupant measuring each other, ready to spring into action at any hint of flaw in their conduct. Naruto. Sasuke took the moment to finally relay his findings to his friend, the latter noticing distress lacing his voice. Before I tracked you here, my investigation led me to a curious place. I saw hologram depictions of Atsutsuki Mamashiki, Kinshiki, and Kagaya. There was some other, completely new Atsutsuki. Sasuke inclined his head to Jaijin, the man letting them talk to find out just how much he got to know from two rats hiding within his organization. His horn looks the same as the one on a new Atsutsuki, he left it at that, the implication of his words vividly clear to the hookage. Atsutsuki are you sure? Naruto asked, a bead of sweat on his forehead. Positive. Sasuke affirmed. The stone patterns that depicted their horns indicated that new Atsutsuki was Kagaya's superior. So you went to that place? Jaijin asked with a tilt of his head, impressed that he couldn't sense the Rinnegan wielder. How did you come to know of it, Ichiha Sasuke? I know about your revolting pet as well. Sasuke carried on, ignoring his question. That being was a juvenile ten tails. Hey ten tails. What's that about? I'm completely lost here. Naruto exclaimed, with Kurama agreeing. After all, he and his siblings are remnants of ten tails. Its hus was sealed alongside Kagai in a different dimension. It shouldn't exist. His eyes widened with a sudden realization. Is it a new one? Kurama voiced within, letting Naruto in on his thoughts the hookage feeling his blood running cold. Moreover, when Atsutsuki and ten tails are involved, the intentions are clear. You plan to drain this entire planet of its life. Sasuke looked down on the celestial being, his Susanoo swords manifesting in both hands of the construct. In that case, we'll take care of you here and now. Meaning that our job remains the same. We'll kick his ass. Naruto kept it simple, opting not to get overwhelmed with this new information to focus on the threat before them. I certainly know that you will try. 
Jai Jing retorted, an amused smirk upon his visage. They didn't answer to that, instead preferring to attack. Naruto created two clones and fused them with the original body, by pulling on his six paths in Jutsu, eventually creating an avatar resembling a Shur from his final battle with Sasuke. During that time, Setichu had moved first, his Susanoo's sword brought in a downward arc, the movement of it sending immense shockwaves. Daijin jumped off the ground, making it break from the force as he flew, casually dodging the sword, all while simultaneously making his way towards Susanoo's head. Sasuke's Rinnegan narrowed, huge black receivers manifesting from the arm of his avatar. Jaijin clearly saw through that and effortlessly dodged every single one of them by rotating his body. Onyx's eyes focused on the new action as Jaijin dodged Kurama's arm, not surprised that the golden limb extended and multiplied to all in a futile effort to land a hit on him. Grabbing the golden arm with his hand, he climbed onto it in a flash and began sprinting to the hookage, avoiding chakra arms or deflecting them with his rods. He front flipped from another one only to see himself teleported by that damned Rinnegan, inches away from six paths ch He affirmed his stance that Ichiha has to go. There are no ifs or buts about it. The Atsusuki zigzagged from a dual slash of the Susanoo's katana. Swerving under it, he avoided a concentrated beam made of Bijidama, flew high in the sky as he dodged more chakra arms, and ducked under the golden tails and the purple swords. Daijin jumped over Kurama's shoulder, landing on the ground as he peered behind him, seeing Susanoo's katana aimed at him. An earthquake rocked the ceiling coffin, the attack kicking up a huge amount of dust, even as the coffin absorbed most of the impact as it did with any other attack before this one. The sword got ingrained in the ground as Sasuke's heterochromatic eyes fixed firmly on the last location of their enemy. Passed down through the generations of Ichiha, the Susanoo came the nonchalant comment of a soothing voice, thus clearing a way to reveal a smirking Jaijin standing on the Susanoo's sword. Its speed isn't all that impressive. What about its defense? Everything happened too suddenly from there on. In a blur that had both of the strongest shinobi in history shocked at the sheer speed, Jaijin appeared before the diamond section of the Susanoo's head right where Sasuke was located. Sasuke swung and missed with his sword due to the alien speed. In defiance of everything they saw the strongest defense, Jaijin kicked it apart with no effort, his leg pressed firmly on Sasuke's chest as he coughed blood. The entire avatar exploded from the kick, its owner shooting out of it at a breakneck speed, ragdolling against the coffin's ground. He easily penetrated the Susanoo's defense. Naruto was aghast at the unbelievable display, as he was intimately familiar with its capabilities. Sasuke forced his bruised body into a sitting position, as numerous rods impaled his frame and neck, draining chakra from him at a rapid rate. His eternal man Jekyo saw Jaijin flying in a downward arc, right toward him. At the sight, his soul arm cracked with electricity, his Rinnegan ready as Kirin struck Sasuke. A minute Ejikari instantly, their positions were switched, Sasuke flying away with his body free of those rods, while Jaijin was hugging the ground, the howl of a lightning dragon being heard for one millisecond, before it vanished completely. Leaving annoyed and unharmed, Jaijin, kneeling on the ground, his back turned to his enemies as rage bubbled beneath the surface. That damned Rinnegan. He couldn't muse over his hatred some more as a sure Kurama enhanced by boil release, struck with numerous arms and tails, demolishing the interior of the coffin. I didn't feel any head connect. Naruto proclaimed through the large cloud of smoke. A second later, each tail of his avatar was getting pierced by enormous rods, essentially sealing him in the same place. He couldn't even deactivate the form. I have to separate myself. Naruto was going to do the same trick he did against Inari, but his cross-shaped pupils dilated as Jaijin flew from the smoke, his fist poised for a strike that bypassed the defenses, and connected with Naruto's torso. Naruto coughed blood even as his injuries healed. Each of the Kurama's heads held, the avatar deforming to grotesque proportions as it exploded under the force of the uppercut, sending Naruto spinning through the air without control. Naruto. Sasuke yelled, running up those giant rods and using it as a foothold to jump. Jaijin got the same idea doing the same as he sailed towards the Jinchuriki. This snapped his attention back. Naruto levitated as he noticed Jaijin moving his hands. Upon seeing so, he formed a truth-seeking orb that deflected those rods, and aimed the giant ball of chakra at his enemy. You never learn. Jaijin seemed more amused than annoyed as the Hokage amped himself with boil release, and reduced the size of that orb, in hopes of getting a better hit. Sasuke's eyes pulsed as he calculated Jaijin's position and the trajectory of his next attack. His humanoid Susanoo formed with the purple sword in the process of slashing thin air. A minute Ejikari Jaijin inwardly screamed at the irksome jutsu. Naruto and Sasuke switched positions, the new target of Sasuke's attack being Jaijin, specifically his neck. As Naruto cheered at the contact, Susanoo's sword and Sasuke's kusanagi vanished, causing the duo of shinobi to gape at the sight. 
Too bad that was a nice try, though. Jaijin tried to offer comfort as his hatred field kick once again connected with Susanu and shattered it in Sasuke's ribs to pieces. He watched in sadistic pleasure as Sasuke crashed through those huge rods, breaking them apart as his bruised and broken body struggled to get up from the ground. Naruto flew to Jaijin, but will release unrivaled strength, upgrading his physical abilities to their absolute limit. Jaijin effortlessly caught his fist and eat him in the abdomen, the hookage hunching over from the attack as his chakra cloak flickered. A well-placed head kick connected behind Naruto's left ear, breaking apart the majority of enormous rods decorating the battlefield, including the one on which they were standing. The hit sent him crashing next to his fallen friend, the shock of it all dissipating his six-path Karama chakra mode. Is that all? Jaijin landed on the ground without a sound, even as chunks of huge chakra rods rained down from the sky. Are you done wasting your chakra? Itcho has left eye blood, the Rinnegan casting a Matarasu on his form. It's an action that made Jaijin question his intelligence. He can absorb Jutsu and Itcho knows it. Well, it is a desperate attempt. They both know they can do nothing anymore. A Matarasu Jaijin tilted his head, enjoying the heat the fire provided. Having his torso constantly exposed can be quite chilly from time to time, so this is a nice change. Folktales say it is as hot as the sun itself, inextinguishable black flames that burn until they reduce their target to ash. Karma worked its magic, absorbing the fire and leaving no trace of it. Not that it matters, what you throw at me. Sasuke opted to ignore him, Rinnegan pulsing as six ethereal dragons derived from Ninjendo enveloped the Atsutsuki, biting at each of his limbs and torso. The result was obvious based on Jaijin's deadpan stare. A few seconds later, soul-sucking dragons vanished, their effort amounting to nothing. He's too strong. Naruto thought bitterly, not voicing it. Instead, he glared at him hatefully. He doesn't want to give him the satisfaction no matter how petty it may sound. Sasuke coughed up blood as his body shook. This is bad. Too much damage and those rods drained a lot out of me. At this rate, I won't have enough for teleportation ninjutsu. The absorption rate of those rods was ridiculous. Not that Sasuke should be that surprised by that. They could subdue and drain chakra from Jubi, juvenile or not. I like those expressions. Jaijin said with glee. You reach the end of your rope. Nevertheless, you should feel proud. It was valiant his ears twitched at the cracking sound of his circle on the abdomen, ignoring the shocked visage of the shinobi, as a twitch came to his temple. I'm really at my limit. Jaijin's body can keep pace with the power. I really do need Kawaki. This vessel is done for. Isiki thought, a frown marring his features. What's with that crack? Naruto blinked at the sight. Is he also? Sasuke thought of his own hypothesis regarding Jaijin's true origins. The constant mentions of a vessel and Kawaki added into the mix. Now, Jaijin suffering damage even if they couldn't put a dent on him, time to finish this. It was fun. Isiki interrupted both shinobi were forced to lay on spikes that protruded from their bodies, paralyzed them, and drained their chakra. Using his hand to guide it down, Isiki brought the lid high from the sky, the purple clouds dispersing as it became fully visible, what's that? Naruto dared to ask. Izumaki Naruto, since it will be too troublesome to kill you due to nine tails inside of you, I will take an easy route and seal you and it away, by closing the lid on the coffin on which we stand. Seal away. Naruto repeated, noticing the pain Sasuke was in. His mind ran with all things to say, just so that Sasuke could amass some chakra and escape from here. Hey. What do you mean by seal away? Why do something so complicated? Is there some reason for that? Didn't I just explain it to you? Isiki's voice was that of a teacher chastising his student. It would be too troublesome to kill you and the Kayubi. I don't have time for you. You don't have time. Does it have something to do with that crack in your abdomen? The knowing smirk adorned his tanned face. Why not cut my head off for something? Because you're annoyingly tenacious, Isiki admitted. I still haven't encountered a being that can take energy draining rods to the brain and still survive. Although, I doubt there is a brain there with how you're openly mocking a man that allows you to live. Be quiet Naruto. Kurama's head manifested next to his vessel to placate him. Don't rile him up further. He never had any business with you in the first place. He doesn't want to waste any chakra. Don't give him a reason to change his mind and slaughter you. Kurama, there it is. The Siki echoed with fake surprise. The beast seems to be the brain of the two. No wonder you came out unscathed during those moments. Ignoring the glare the Hulkage gave him, he continued. But he's right, I have no particular interest in you. Your son, however, is a different story. Isn't that the truth? He can sacrifice him to the Ten Tails for the Chakra. His name is Burrito, right? It's a shame that I never got to meet him at your house. Is he coming along nicely? What's Burrito have to do with anything? Naruto asked, temper flaring. 
Don't play it dumb Isiki tapped his vessel's chin. He ha it would do him no good to go berserk at this point. He has something that they can hopefully use later if they survive this. When the situation is a lot clearer and the conditions are met. Kurama can't initiate it right here and now. Isiki turned to Sasuke, who was struggling to be conscious. Ichiha Sasuke can it be that you don't have any energy to move? Isiki looked at Naruto. Or did he prattle to help you buy some time for your escape? Naruto said nothing, even as a twitch came to his jaw. Kusanagi came to Isiki's hand, as he stabbed it next to Sasuke, strong enough to leave it standing up. A small act of mercy leaving the warrior's weapon next to him before killing him. As you can escape with space-time ninjutsu, you need to die right here. Do not feel disappointed. As I said, it was a valiant effort on your part. Sasuke struggled to grab his sword from his painful position, eyes full of rage at the condescending prick. Pain, dizziness, terror, failure, and the knowledge of the cost of what might occur should they fail here, made him blurt out his next thought. Beautiful. Let down by a creature that is a hypocrite to its core. Sasuke's onyx eye gauged him for any reaction. At least Kagaya never displayed herself superior, while latching onto some poor humans to survive. Admittedly, the last part of the statement was mostly a shot in the dark for Sasuke, but judging by the way the temperature of the air fell by a few degrees, and Jaijin's change in body language, he was right. Latching. Naruto repeated, sharing a look with Kurama. His eyes widened as he remembered Sasuke's earlier report. Knowing firsthand how powerful the Atsutsuki are, there is no way a mere human can steal their power for their own, figuring out the full implications of it all, his temper returned with vengeance. Hey. Are you controlling someone of course not? The Siki easily answered, waving off the ridiculous question. The Chiha was far more inquisitive than he believed him to be. Looking at his defeated enemies, he was genuinely surprised at why the two shinobi were looking at him like that. It was only when he took notice of his damp left cheek, did he realize why that was. These things happen from time to time, the previous owner of his body, his subconsciousness that is buried deep in the sunken place of his mindscape desperately trying to resurface. However, as his control began slipping, Isiki wondered why the reaction was so severe this time. It never amounted to more than a soft sob or a few tears, perhaps it is because of the potent chakra of two shinobi that he came into contact with. Kagaya's brat ridiculous ninshu philosophy binding to Jaijin's own energy. No Jaijin, the former monk, let out a soft whimper as tears freely began falling. Nanono Naruto and Sasuke's eyes softened as they saw the unnatural duality painting the ancient human's visage. The left side is the most humane, tears sliding and mouth opening in short breaths to speak up. The right one, abnormal in its appearance, remains annoyed at the futile effort. Daijin couldn't feel anything. His senses were completely dulled, feeling discombobulated from millennia of being trapped in his own body. He was drifting in a void comparable to space, his actions restricted, as he was only capable of seeing all the atrocities Asiki did with his body. He can't waste this chance enough. Asiki ordered, twisting his cerebral cortex to prevent him from speaking further. Jaijin's body shook, and he whimpered, feeling the words he tried to speak leaving him before they were even uttered. He hoped against all odds as he tried to convey his final message. Kill M. The monk felt his limited control of his own body slowly leaving. Mustering up every bit of strength as he prayed to Shinto gods, he tried to give out his final message. Kill me. Kill me. Kill me. With all of his might, Jaijin screamed the same two words over and over again, the howl of an innocent man sending chills down two shinobi's bodies. Slowly, but surely the screams subdue as they were never there to begin with, Jaijin's terrified visage returning to the previous impasse of one of the Atsutsuki. That's enough out of you. Asiki forced the control of Jaijin's body to himself, returning the former monk to his hell. Enjoy the sunken place for a while longer. Drifting amidst the endless colorless void of his mindscape, Jaijin's soul lost even a sliver of hope it had left for relief that death would bring him. Back in the outside world, Naruto had a few choices of words for the alien. You demon. Sasuke spat vehemently. As he remembered the transference ritual and all those souls trapped within Orochimaru, Sasuke knew he was close to this happening to him as well. You demented son of a bitch. Naruto's tone was brusque, conveying the absolute disgust he felt. You ensnared a human being what the fuck is wrong with you? Naruto. Kurama tried to calm him down, but even he felt anger at the new information. Don't try to apply humanity's morality to me. He should feel privileged that I chose him as my vessel. Asiki spoke with certainty, leaving it at that. Eyes on Sasuke, he began walking towards the injured shinobi. Ichiha, you teleportation ninjutsu is a nuisance. Asiki smirked. You may try to escape on your own, if you're capable of leaving the hookage behind, that is. Wouldn't be the first time now, would it? You damned bastard. Sasuke curse. Sasuke, run. 
Naruto managed to amass some small amount of chakra, as 10 clones appeared and engaged Asiki in combat, getting easily beaten up. Naruto turned to his friend. Hurry. Naruto. It's impossible to beat this guy right now. Naruto wasn't the kid he used to be. He knew when they were outmatched. At this rate, we'll both be done for. You need to escape without me. Rods through their heads, two clones popped, dropping Sasuke's chances for escape. Even as it happened, Sasuke didn't want to leave Naruto at Atsutsuki's mercy, even if the reality of the situation was clear to him. There should be some way to defeat him. Without you, it will be all hopeless. Sasuke stated. He and Naruto defeated the gods together, he couldn't do it alone. I feel the same. Don't worry. I won't go down that easily. Despite the situation, Naruto wore a smile on his face. Go, Sasuke. He urged as he saw the final clone getting destroyed. With heavy regret, a black and purple portal emerged behind the battered shinobi, swallowing him just in time to prevent Asiki from grabbing him. Back at Kanoha, in the hallway of her apartment, Sakura was just in time to open her door to see her injured husband on the floor. Sasuke. Sakura exclaimed, aghast at what she saw. Sasuke dropped to the concrete, and Kusanagi clattered to the floor as a pool of blood began forming underneath his body. Before he succumbed to unconsciousness, he muttered a single thing. Don't you die, Naruto in Asiki's dimension, the said celestial being was disappointed at the failure to kill the annoying Rinnegan user. Ha, too bad for you. You can track Kawaki's chakra with karma, but not Sasuke's. Naruto mocked, despite the situation. So much for a superior creature. He just ignored him. A dog that barks the loudest never bites as displayed here. You must have been quite busy, Hulkage. Asiki levitated from the ground as he exited the coffin. Enjoy the extension of your life in the pitch darkness I'll leave you in. It will be your end the next time we meet. If you're still alive, that is. Remember those words, because I'm going to feed them to you. I promise on everything I hold dear, I'll rip you out of his body, you damned parasite. Naruto vowed to help the man whose body was taken over by the Atsutsuki. Leaving him on the floor bloodied, chakra rod subduing and draining his reserves, Isiki flew out of the coffin, dropped the lid on it, and shrunk it, until it was just big enough to hold the Hokage's body within the cramped space. Isiki didn't care about the devastation their battle left through the massive space. The solar system four times the size of Earth's zone was completely obliterated, suns already undergoing the supernova, as the planet on which they stood was the sole survivor. If the injuries Naruto received and those chakra rods wouldn't kill him, then the combined supernova of three suns definitely would. Isiki truly didn't care about that. He only cared about the expiration date of this body. And it's approaching rapidly. I never thought I'd expand this much. He dropped to his knee, exhausted from the battle. Two new cracks on his abdomen spoke volumes of it. He felt tears on the vessel's face once more. What? Are you in pain? You're crying again, Jaijin. To shed tears is truly pathetic. As the red and black portal behind him opened up, the host gave him yet another insult. You're unworthy of being Atsutsuki Asiki's vessel, you defective failure. With that, he left this corner of the universe to recuperate this failed product. Soon, however, his long ambition will be fulfilled. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.